Hello everybody. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to find the zeros of a polynomial function. So remember that zeros of the polynomial function, they are the x-intercepts of the function. So let's try to remember first of all, what's the standard form of the polynomial function? f of x equals a n x to n plus a n minus 1 x n minus 1 plus so on a2 x2 plus a1 x plus a0. We say 0 which means the x-intercept and the symbol to write it it is x0 so, x-intercept, it's the point where the graph intersects the x-axis. It's located on x-axis, which means the y-coordinate, it is 0. So, to find the x's, we have to replace, instead of f of x, y, we have to put 0. In this way, from function, we will convert into corresponding equation. And the polynomial equation, it can be solved by factoring. In our lesson for today, we are going to work only with polynomials that they can be factored. In the next lesson, we will learn how to find the possible rational zeros of the polynomial function. We said before that the most important term, it's the leading term, in which the degree of the polynomial for the graph gives us the possible turning point and the possible zeros. So this is what we are going to look for today to learn about how to find the possible zeros using factoring and after how to sketch the graph of the function using the end behavior and the factors we found. And let's see. Use zeros to graph a polynomial function. The function is given f of x equals x times x minus 4 times x plus 3. The symbol to write 0, it is x0, as we said, in which 0 stands for y, where y is f of x. So instead of f of x, we will put the 0. It will be x times x minus 4 times x plus 3 equals to 0. Product, it is 0. If at least one of the factors, it is 0. So use the 0 property of multiplication. So maybe x is 0. From the second factor, x minus 4 equals 0. And from the last one, x plus 3 equals to 0. Already the first one is solved for x. From the second one, x equals to 4. And from the third one, x equals to negative 3. The polynomial has degree 3 because if we distribute, we will get x times x times x. The polynomial, it will have the degree 3, which means possible turning points, 3 minus 1, 2, and possible zeros, 3. So we already found them. So to graph, we need the turning points, we need the zeros, and not only, we need more points in order that we can sketch the graph as much as we can correct, and for this we are, look, we are going to look for the y-intercept of the function in which x it is 0. So if we substitute for each x 0, 0 times no matter what, it will be equals to 0. So from here the y-intercept it is 0. Also remember the end behavior of the function for which we need the leading term. We can get the leading term by multiplying the first term in each expression. So it will be x times x times x, which equals x cubed. So degree, it is 3, which means odd. 
and the leading coefficient it is one so the end behavior it will be down up now we can sketch without no problem so sketch the coordinate plane first on x-axis plot the x-intercepts in counting order negative 3, 0, 4. So let's say this is negative 3, 0, 4, the y-intercept and the end behavior, which is said is down, up. So here down and here up and two possible rational zeros. So this it will be the graph, the sketch of the graph of the function. Let's try more. On page 163, you have question A. So factor, find the zeros and sketch the graph. So we'll take it. f of x equals 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 24x. The symbol to write 0, it is x0. Zero. So 0 for y. It will be 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 24x equals to 0. Simplify by 4. x cubed plus x squared minus 6x equals to 0. We have to factor it. So common factor it is x times x squared plus x minus 6 equals to 0. The quadratic trinomial, it can be factored more. So negative 6, it came from 3 times negative 2. When we multiply negative 6 and when we add, it's one coefficient of x. So then we can factor it more in x times x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 0. Use the 0 property. From the first factor, x equals to, three, to 0. From the second one, x equals negative 3. And from the third one, x equals to 2. And these are the x-intercepts, the zeros of the function. The degree, it is 3. So, three possible zeros. That we can sketch correct, we said. We need one more point where the point is the y-intercept, 0y, in which 0 stands for x. From here, y equals, so in each x, we will substitute with 0, it will be y equals to 0. So the y-intercept, it is 0. The leading term is, 4x cubed, in which the leading coefficient it is 4, greater than 0, and the degree it is 3 odd. Then the end behavior, it will be down, up. For the left side, x approaches negative infinity y approaches negative infinity. For the right side, x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. Now we sketch the coordinate plane and plot on it the points we found. Starting with the x-intercepts, negative 3, 0, 2. So let's say this is negative 3, 0, and 2, and the y-intercept we found it 0, so it's here. We put the end behavior in the left side, down, up. As long degree it is 3, the turning point, it will be 3 minus 1 equals to 2. So we have to connect these points, it will be like this. This is the sketch of the graph. Let's try more. Describe the end behavior of the function at each of its zeros. So let's find the zeros first. Uh, put x0 and it will be x times x plus 4 
times x minus 1 all to exponent 4 equals to 0. From the first one, x is 0. From the second one, x equals negative 4. And from the last one, x equals to 1, multiplicity of 4. Multiplicity of 4 for, uh, for 1. The leading, the leading term, it will be found by simply multiplying the first term in each factor. So it is x times x times x to 4. And this is x to 6, in which degree it is 6. Turning points, possible turning points is 5. And the leading coefficient, it is 1, which is positive. So the end behavior, it will be up, up. And because of here, even in this point, in x equals 1, if we have to graph it, we will find parabola opening upward. So it will be here 1 and parabola opening upward, like this. In the second one, so find the x intercepts, the zeros, it will be x squared plus 9 times x minus 1 to exponent 5 times x plus 2 squared equals to 0. From the first one, x squared plus 9 equals to 0, so x squared equals negative 9 which means x equals positive negative 3i. This is complex, which means here is no x-intercept, no zero. From the second one, x minus 1 equals to 0, so x equals 1, multiplicity of 5 for 1. And from the second one, x equals negative 2, multiplicity of 2. And again, in x equals negative 2, because this is multiplicity of 2, in this point we'll find parabola. The leading term, it will be x squared times x to exponent 5 times x to exponent 2, which equals x to 9 in which 9 represents the degree, which is odd, and the leading coefficient, it is 1, which is greater than 0. So the, the end behavior, it will be down, up. And in negative 2, as we said, we have multiplicity of 2. So in this point, we will have parabola. What are all the real and complex zero of the polynomial of the polynomial functions shown in the graph? So if we take the first graph, graph A, from the graph we see that the function intersects the graph in exactly one point. So there exists only one x-intercept. And from the graph also we can say that the x-intercept x equals to 3. This is our function. The graph, it has one, two turning points. So from the turning points, we conclude that degree equals 3. And this is true. The degree is 3. But if degree is 3, they, we should find, we, there there should be three possible zeros, not only one possible zero. So it means that the other two zeros, they are complex numbers. The question is, how to do, what to do to find the complex numbers? So if we know that x equals 3, from the zero, we find the factor. Remember that the factors... We use them, in the factor we use the zero property to get the zeros. So then we will go back to equals to zero by moving the three on the other side. So it will be x minus three. If we know one factor 
of the polynomial, then we can use the division to find the rest of the factors. As long as the factor given it is linear, we can simply use the synthetic division. So it will be x cubed, x squared, x1, x0. Under each one, put the coefficients to negative 8, 9, negative 9. And from x minus 3, the x is 3, we'll put it in the left corner. Bring down the first term, 3 times 2, 6. Negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2. 3, negative 2, negative 6. 3, 9, 0. So remainder 0, as long as factor. I'm going to write it on the top. So it will be f of x in factored form, x minus 3 times... 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. So from the first factor, x equals to 3. And from the second one, 2x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals to 0. This quadratic, it cannot be factored. Very easy to observe. Delta, it is negative. So to solve the equation, we are going to use the quadratic formula. x12, it will be equals, just to remember it to you, negative b plus or minus square root b square minus 4ac all over 2a, in which... The coefficients for x are the ABC. So 2, it's the A, B, it's negative 2, and C, it is 3. So it will be equals negative B, negative 2, negative, it's 2, plus or minus square root. B square is negative 2 square, which is 4. Negative 4 times 2, negative 8. Negative 8 times 3, negative 24. All over 2A is 2 times 2, 4. And this I will get its simplest form. I will continue writing here. So it will be 2 plus or minus square root. 4 minus 24 is negative 20. All over 4. Square root of negative 20, it is equal. Square root of 20, it's a 12 square root 5. And negative, it came from complex. So it's 2i square root of 5. So it will be 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 5 all over 4. We can simplify by 2. So it will be 1 over 2 plus or minus square root 5 over 2i. So 1 real 0, x equals 3. And the other zeros, they are complex numbers. 1 over 2 plus or minus square root of 5 over 2i. So if they are complex, this they are, we are not going to find them on x-axis. Let's try more. In question B, from the graph, we see here two x-intercepts. The degree is 4, which means that the function from degree 4 From degree 4, from degree 4, we understand that the function graph, the turning points, there are three possible turning points, and the equation has four possible zeros. Four possible real zeros. But from the graph, we have only two real zeros. Uh, instead of long division here, let's see if we can factor it. It will be easier. So y equals x4 minus 3x squared minus 4. So x0 in which x4 minus 3x squared minus 4 equals to 0. Use substitution. So let x squared equals to a, so a squared minus 3 
a square minus 4 equals to 0. So we can factor it in negative 4, 1. So it will be a minus 4 times a plus 1 equals to 0. From the first factor, a equals to 4. And from the second one, a equals to negative 1. a, it came from x squared equals to 4. And from here, square root on both of the sides, x equals to positive negative 2. From the second one, x squared equals negative 1. Square root on both of the sides, x equals positive or negative i. So as you can see, two real zeros and two complex. So these ones, they are not x-intercepts. And this is what we can see in the graph. They say, Acme Innovations makes and sells lamps. Their profit P in hundreds of dollars earned, it's a function of the number of lamps sold X. So on X axis, we have the number of lamps sold. And on Y axis, we have the profit. But this is a real life situation. The graph here, it is graph the polynomial function. But for a real life situation, the, the number of the lamps, they cannot be negative. Yes? So then we are not going to use the quadrant 2 and 3 in answering the question. This is real life situation. So we cannot use negative number of lamps. From historical data, they know that their company's profit is modeled by the function shown. What do the zeros of the function tell you? The zeros here, 1, 2, 3, and here 0, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, this is 10. Where we said that x represents the number of the sold, uh, of the lamps sold. So from the graph, what do they mean, these zeros, for our real-life situation? First of all, if x is less, the, the x values, the number of the lamps, is between 0, 3. As you can see, the graph is drawn under the x-axis, which means the profit is negative, which means there is no profit. We also have the pr uh, part of the graph uh, under x-axis from 10, and greater than 10. So if the number of the lamps is between 0 and 3, then there is no profit. It's a loss. Or there is no profit loss if the number of the lamps, it will be greater than 10. So then this company has a profit if they will produce between 3 and 10 lamps because the graph, it goes up. The y's values, they are positive. So then we can say that x has to be between 3 and 10. So they have to produce between 3 and 10 lamps such that there it will be a profit. What are the solutions of the equation? This is a polynomial equation. So first of all, remember you have to write in standard form, which means from the greatest exponent of the variable into the least one and equals to zero. So I'm going to get it, put it into simplest form. Minus 2x cubed minus 5x squared and plus 3x. So it will be 3 minus 2 x cubed, 8 minus 5 plus 3 x squared, and 1 plus 3 x here we cannot simplify, so plus 3 x plus 1 equals to 0. The polynomial has four terms, so if the polynomial it has four terms, to factor it we are going to use grouping, group the first two and the last two, and look for their common factor. In the first two, the common factor is x squared. In the, la in the last two is not, so we cannot group them in this way. 
I will group the first with the last and the two in the middle. So it will be x cubed plus 1 plus between these two, the common factor it is 3x times x plus 1 equals to 0. Factor this binomial into x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 plus 3x times x plus 1 equals to 0. In this way, we find the common factor. It is x plus 1. So we can write x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 plus 3x equals to 0. So it will be x plus 1 times, get the simplest form, x squared, negative x plus 3x plus 2x plus 1 equals to 0. This one represents x plus 1 squared times x plus 1 equals to 0. So it will be x plus 1 cubed equals to 0, from which x equals to negative 1, multiplicity of 3 for negative 1. On page 166, question 5a, again, polynomial, it has to be given in standard form. So we need a standard form that we can solve the equation. Now, let's see which terms left and right of equals are the same. So we can simplify by x cubed and the greatest exponent too. So we'll move these terms on the other side. So it will be plus 7x and minus 6. So it will be 5x squared, uh, 7 minus 2 plus 5x, and negative 24 minus 6 is negative 30 equals to 0. Simplify by 5. It will be x squared plus x minus 6 equals to 0. Factor the negative 6 into 3 and negative 2, when we multiply them, the product negative 2, 6, and when we will add, it will be the coefficient of x1. So we can factor it into x plus 3 times x minus 2 equals to 0. Use, apply the 0 property of multiplication, so or x plus 3 equals to 0, or x minus 2 equals to 0. From the first one, x equals negative 3, and from the second one, x equals to 2. So the polynomial equation has two real roots. And the last one, again, we look for the standard form from greatest exponent into the least exponent. So we move these two terms on the other side. It will be x4 plus x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x equals to 0. Four terms use the grouping property that we can factor. From the first two terms, the common factor x cubed. And from the last two terms, the common factor it is 2x. So x plus 1 equals to 0. In this way, x plus 1 is common factor, so we factor it again times x cubed plus 2x equals to 0. The, the second factor, the common factor, it is x. I'll put it, because it's a monomial, I'll put it in front. So it will be x squared plus 2 equals to 0. The last factor, it cannot be factored in real numbers. So Using the zero property, from the first factor, x equals to zero. From the second one, x plus one is zero, which means x equals to negative one. Zero, negative one, real numbers. And from the last one, x squared equals negative two. Square root on both of the sides, x equals, 
positive negative square root 2 i. So the last two zeros, they are not real. Thank you.